Hello everybody, Adam Cleary from 442 here and Jurgen Klopp has officially announced that he will leave his role as Liverpool manager at the end of the season. And you know what? All of a sudden, I kind of get why people went so mad when the Queen died. In an official statement by the club that was followed up by an extended interview with the man himself, he announced that come the end of the current Premier League season, he will be stepping down as his role as head coach of Liverpool. But naturally, there are a ton of questions about this, so we will try and lay out all the answers for you in this video. But if I may just be quickly permitted to editorialize slightly here, fucking hell. Okay, so first and foremost, Jurgen Klopp is not being sacked by Liverpool. He's not losing his job in that sense. He has decided that it is time for him to step away from that role. And why is that? Well, in the video he has given to the official Liverpool FC YouTube channel, he says that basically he's tired and not tired of Liverpool or even necessarily tired of football just tired the guy is 56 and he's never really had anything resembling a single break from the game since he was a kid like genuinely Klopp was a lower league German footballer played his entire professional career at Mainz 05 and took over the manager's role there while he was still on the playing staff it was February 2001 the club were without a manager so we retired from the game as a player to immediately take up the role as a manager he was there for like seven or eight years he got them their first promotion in literally decades and despite the fact they were the smallest club in that division both like financially structurally everything they were fairly comfortable for a while. Eventually, that lack of investment did tell and they were relegated back to the second division, but Klopp stayed to try and get them back up, and when he failed to do that, he took the Dortmund job. And again, he was there for seven or eight years. Everybody knows how successful that period of his career was. He's got like two Bundesliga titles. He was a runner-up in the Champions League. He really made Dortmund a mainstay of top-level European football. But then in April 2015, he announced he would be leaving Dortmund at the end of the season, which he did. And he enjoyed a very short sabbatical before in October, he was appointed the Liverpool manager. And you don't need me to tell you in these past eight or nine years, he's won the Premier League, the FA Cup, the Carabao, the Champions League. He's won the lot with Liverpool and that brings us right up to date. And that, my friends, is what this is all about because in that entire story that starts with him as a fresh-faced teenager in Germany and ends literally today with him announcing he's leaving Liverpool at the age of 56, the biggest break he's had from football in that entire time has been the scant four months between taking the Dortmund job and taking the Liverpool job. Or to put that another way, the guy has not had a break since 1987 and now he wants one. And I mean fair but it still does beg the question why now why this season Jurgen Klopp very recently signed a contract extension with Liverpool that takes him up to 2026 why not just see the contract out well and to be fair this is a really honest admission from Klopp in the interview he's put out about it there's kind of an awareness from him that in any normal job he would have just been sacked last season. He literally says in the interview that there were points last season where he thought this decision was about to be taken out of his hands and perhaps maybe it should have been. It has kind of been forgotten a bit because they finished so strongly and got into fifth and they've been brilliant this season. But there were parts of last season, specifically around the turn of the year, where Liverpool were in a bad way. From the start of 2023, they went on a really bad run, conceding three against Brentford, conceding three against Brighton, conceding three against Wolves, and were languishing in 10th in the league. They were out of the FA Cup, they were out of the Carabao Cup, they got in embarrassed over two legs by Real Madrid. They were having a total stinker. But in amongst all this, they did win the Merseyside derby quite well, and they beat Man United 7-0, which certainly wasn't going to hurt. But there was still talk at the time that maybe Klopp had taken this group as far as he could. It seemed fairly obvious that so many of the stars that had got them to where they'd been were entering a period of physical decline. Now, they needed a complete overhaul of the playing staff and possibly of the structure in the direction, and maybe Klopp wasn't the right guy to do that. Now, the first part of that has been answered emphatically this season. They've moved on your Jordan Hendersons and your Fabinho's and whatnot, and they've replaced them with Dominic Sabozlai and players coming through the academy like Curtis Jones. That rebuild is well underway and looks to be going massively in the right direction. And because Klopp had started that off, there was kind of the assumption that, okay, he's going to have a brand new version of Liverpool. That'll probably take him up to the end of his contract in 2026. And then 
they'll go again. Thing is, there's still obviously more work to do. Mo Salah is 31 and continues to attract interest from mega money teams around the world. Virgil van Dijk is 32 and has come back from what could have been a potentially career-ending injury and has had to adapt his game accordingly. There's still quite a big chunk of this rebuild to do and it's probably the most important bit. And if any part of that is going to happen this summer, then you want a manager in charge who is thinking about the next five, six, seven years. And if that isn't going to be Klopp, then there's no point him staying around till 2026. It is best if he moves on now. And you have to just give him enormous credit for this because he's already done the hard part of this. He's moved on that first chunk of players, brought in a brand new crop, developed some of the academy lads and implemented a really cutting edge system that suits all of them. And obviously only time's going to tell with this, but it does look on the face of it like he has laid the foundations for his successor and the long-term future of this side way better than the likes of Alex Ferguson or Arsene Wenger did. Unlike those two though, Klopp hasn't definitely said that he's 100% no takesy backs, he's fully retiring after this, but if there is one crumb of comfort possibly for Liverpool fans, what he has said is that if he discovers that he misses the game too much and he finds he has to get back into it somewhere down the line, he could never ever manage another club in England. Except Liverpool. Which, I mean, technically, on that wording, doesn't rule out the possibility that he come back to Liverpool one day, does it? I've watched way too many Marvel films, haven't I? So, the last question, of course, is who replaces him? Everybody and their dog is going to be saying Xavi Alonso because of the job he's doing at Leverkusen, and... Yeah, he would seem to me to be the most natural fit for this position. And there is that rumour as well. He's got some weird clause in his contract that says if the Liverpool job comes up, he can just go. Other than that, Roberto De Zerbi has been linked in the past. Pep Linders is obviously highly thought of enough within the club that he could potentially take over. Then you've got Nagelsmann, maybe, Enrique, Steven Gerrard. But yes... That's that. Jurgen Klopp is leaving Liverpool and he does so undoubtedly its most successful manager in the Premier League era. And that is just, that's not a video I expected to have to do in the next few years, let alone today. We will, of course, have more about this in the coming weeks. We'll do a full breakdown of who might be a good replacement. We'll probably look at how Xavi Alonso's got Leverkusen playing. So if you want to see any of that, please do subscribe to us here on 442. You won't miss a single video, and that'll make you happy. You can get me on Twitter, at Adam Cleary, C-L-E-R-Y. It's going to be a weird day, and 442 socials are, of course, in the corner of the video. Out of respect for what Liverpool fans must be feeling, I will not now pull the magazine across with Alex Ferguson on the cover and Hype that up to you, but you can still find it in all good news agents and the crap ones too. In the meantime, I'm going for a lie down, I think, for a bit, because what else can you do? Traitors tonight as well, so whew, emotional roller coaster. Anyway, bye, stay safe.